Perhaps the greatest achievement of late 20th and early 21st century astrophysics is the arrival of a consensus model of the entire universe. For countless generations, humans have marveled at questions such as, what is the universe? What makes it up? How far, to the limits of what it's possible to observe, does it go on for? How did it come into existence? And how long ago? How did it grow up to be the way it is today? And what will its ultimate fate be? Today, after unprecedented measurements of galaxies all throughout cosmic history, all sky imaging of the universe at microwave wavelengths, and thousands upon thousands of supernovae and other transient events all across the universe, we finally have our answers to these questions. Our universe, made of 68% dark energy, 27% dark matter, and just 5% normal stuff, began from a small, dense, nearly perfectly uniform state some 13.8 billion years ago in a hot Big Bang, and has been expanding, cooling, and gravitating ever since. Recently, a challenge to that picture has gotten some popular attention, based on a recently published paper claiming that the universe is actually 26.7 billion years old, not 13.8 billion years old. Let's look at these two theories side by side and unpack what's true versus what we'd need to be true in order to truly determine the age of the universe. Anytime you're given a scientific theory, you have to ask yourself, what assumptions are behind it? In the case of the standard model of cosmology, first, the laws of physics are given by general relativity for gravity and the standard model of particle physics for the other three fundamental forces. Second, the universe is roughly the same in all directions, isotropic, and the same at all locations, homogeneous, if you examine it on the largest cosmic scales. Third, in addition to the known particles that make up our conventional notions of matter and radiation, there also exists some form of dark matter and some form of dark energy. On the other hand, the new idea, put forth by controversial scientist Rajendra Gupta, keeps most of the same assumptions in place, but offers a few subtle but important changes. First, instead of assuming that only the Doppler shift, the relative motions of the light-emitting source and the light-absorbing observer, the gravitational shift, the difference in the space-time curvature between the emitting source and the absorbing observer, and the cosmological shift, as the traveling light gets stretched to longer wavelengths by the expanding space-time it's traveling through. Gupta also presupposes an idea first put forth by noted astronomer Fritz Zwicky back in 1929. The tired light hypothesis, or the notion that light, as it travels through space, inherently radiates and loses energy as it travels, becoming tired before it arrives at the observer. And second, instead of the standard assumption that the laws of physics and the fundamental constants behind them are constant with time, Gupta invokes an assumption that others have explored previously, that the fundamental constants like the speed of light, Planck's constant, and the gravitational constant aren't actually constant in time, but vary. In particular, they vary in a special way changing altogether, so that the combinations of these constants that govern atomic transitions and the emissions or absorption lines that we wind up observing won't change as we look to earlier, more distant galaxies within the expanding universe. But it's also vitally important to look at the full suite of data, as opposed to just the pieces of data that are easily fit by your model or preferred theory. In order to be considered a success, you have to consider everything that we observe on all scales from subatomic ones to cosmic ones, is consistent with, and not in conflict with, your theory for how the universe works. In his paper, to his credit, Gupta looks at a few important pieces of the puzzle. He looks at the inferred distance to supernovae seen at a wide variety of cosmic distances, and shows that not only are they consistent with the standard cosmological model, but also with a version of that includes tired light, with a model with covarying coupling constants, and with a model with covarying coupling constants and tired light included. While yes, he's including two extra free parameters in his theory as opposed to standard lambda CDM, in the form of a tired light component to the universe, and also in the form of a set of covarying coupling constants, this remains consistent with what we've observed for how distances, redshifts, and brightnesses appear in the expanding universe. 
In addition, Gupta also notes that, by introducing tired light on its own in addition to the standard ingredients in a Lambda CDM cosmology, he arrives at a universe that ages much more slowly at very high redshifts, corresponding to great distances. Whereas a standard Lambda CDM universe has experienced only 13.8 billion years since the hot Big Bang, a Lambda CDM universe with tired light would be about 6 billion years older, up to about 19 and change billion years old. Additionally, much of that aging would come early on, whereas galaxies seen at the limit of Hubble and near the edge of JWST's capabilities, at a redshift of Z equals 10, would be only 400 million years old in Lambda CDM. They would be about 2 billion years old in Lambda CDM with tired light. Furthermore, by introducing both covariant coupling constants and tired light, he can increase the total age of the universe to be a whopping 26.7 billion years. At a redshift of Z equals 10, instead of 400 million or even 2 billion years, the universe would already be about 6 billion years old, an impressively large figure. Gupta contends that, whereas JWST has shown us galaxies that appear brighter, more massive, and more evolved than had been expected to be seen so early on, his modified cosmology, with tired light and varying coupling constants, these galaxies suddenly fall into line with expectations. But as we said earlier, science isn't about solely looking at the data points that favor your explanation. That's what we call cherry picking and that's a surefire way to lead us towards biased conclusions. There are key pieces of evidence that would show up if either light got tired as it traveled through the universe and or if the fundamental constants have changed as the universe has evolved. They would show up in extremely telling ways, and we can actually list a few of them off before looking at the evidence that the universe itself presents on these fronts. First, we would expect to see a deviation in the cosmic microwave background radiation, the afterglow of the Big Bang. If the light indeed got tired, the temperature fluctuations we observe today would be different, displaying a pattern inconsistent with our current models. Second, we would need to observe changes in the fundamental constants over time. This would mean that measurements of atomic spectra from distant galaxies would show variations compared to those from nearby galaxies. Third, the tired light theory would predict a different relationship between redshift and distance for astronomical objects. This could be verified by accurately measuring the distances to far-off galaxies, using various methods and comparing them to their redshifts. Lastly, any modifications to our current cosmological models would need to account for the formation and evolution of structures in the universe, like galaxies and clusters of galaxies. By looking at how the nuclear reactions occurred under the natural conditions that existed on Earth 1.7 billion years ago, we can determine that the fine structure constant, which depends on the electron charge, the speed of light, and Planck's constant, changes by less than 0.3 parts in 10 quadrillion per year. That constraint is, quite literally, billions of times stronger than what Gupta's varying fundamental constant explanation would require. It is for these reasons, among others, that we can overwhelmingly conclude that even though Gupta's toy model of the universe may be fun to play with, it has no basis in reality as far as either tired light or co-varying fundamental constants are concerned. Observations of the universe, from in-focus distant galaxies to cosmologically time-dilated events to a black-body cosmic microwave background spectrum to nuclear reactors right here on Earth, all show that these ideas do not correspond to our actual reality. In the end, science is a journey of discovery, constantly evolving as we uncover new evidence and refine our understanding of the cosmos. The universe might not be fully understood, but its age is definitely 13.8 billion years old and absolutely cannot be 26.7 billion years old based on the evidence at hand. 